All right, just want to welcome everybody to another uh, session of the KevCam night class here. Um, just want to thank everybody for taking their time out of their night to uh, listen to my boring speech. No. <laughs> uh, just to kind of get caught up on uh, different coordinate systems and uh, different uh, talking subjects for you guys. Um, tonight I got Steve Welsh helping me out. Um, he is the kind of a central time zone, a little bit of eastern time zone account manager. And uh, Steve, are you there? Yeah, I am. Uh, welcome, everybody. Again, I'll echo what Kevin said. Appreciate you taking the time and uh, hope to make it uh, really valuable for you. Absolutely. So just uh, for a few housekeeping uh, you know, things going on here. For those of you that are new to the uh, night class, um, right now everybody is put on mute, um, and that's just to reduce the background noise. Um, over on your GoToMeeting panel, you should see a questions area. Um, if you guys have questions, definitely type those in there, and uh, Steve will address those right away. Or if he doesn't know the answer, he'll just tell me to shut up and let's answer that question for whoever we need to get, a, get their question yep. answered. So, yep. um, yeah. With that being said, um, you know what we started uh, with the new flyer. Actually, I have the wrong flyer up here. Let me pull up the. What we're doing for you guys is we want uh, suggestions from you guys on what you guys want to see. So um, I know like I talked about this last week too. So, um, you know, send me your your ideas that you guys want to see in the night class and, um, you know, send me the, you know, what you guys want to see. And, you know, if we're just going to do a random pick and whoever gets picked will get a free t-shirt and hat. And uh, for last week, James Hall or Jim Hall, is our lucky winner, so he'll be getting a solid cam hat and t-shirt. But uh, like I said, just, uh, you know, we want to make this, um, you know, a learning spot for you guys. And uh, so if you guys just want, just shoot me an email with, uh, you know, your idea that you want to see or, um, you know, contact your account manager and they'll let me know and we'll get that added into the agenda. So um, in a few weeks, we actually got a, a one coming up where it's going to be, um, you know, you guys tell me what you guys want to see. So we won't have any really topic. Um, you guys just think of something that you want to see live and we'll demonstrate it as best we can for you and get those questions answered. So, and More like kind of an open forum, Kevin. Yeah, correct? absolutely. Yep. 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 And what I'm going to do here for you guys that don't have my email address is I'm typing it into the GoToMeeting chat. So you should see my email address in there. Um, definitely shoot me an email if you guys have any questions. Um, and same thing with, uh, you know, if you guys just getting into this and you guys want to see some previous videos that we did, definitely go over to my YouTube channel um, it's under Solid Cam University, and we have all the different classes in here. So we have the uh, simulation that we did last week. We have settings, workflow, uh, tool libraries, everything in there. So um, definitely go to YouTube. Type in KevCam, or if you want, I'll copy and paste the link into the chat for you too. Hit that uh, subscribe button so you'll see when we have new videos popping up. And I do some random videos also in there too, so it's just not going to be just KevCam stuff. So if you have, uh, you know, if one of you guys comes in and I can't make a whole hour-long class out of it, we'll do is I'll just come in here and make a short video for you guys, and then that way, you know, everybody can kind of benefit from that. So. But, I have one quick question. Did you? Uh, yep. You do, you do have the uh, recording going. I got the recording going, so we're we're going good. Beautiful. So All this right. time I won't forget like I did with that. Uh, that was a fixture class we did. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> but. All right. So All let's right. get the ball rolling here. Um, so this week we are going over coordinate system. Anything to do with coordinate systems, and I'm going to try to go through every possible scenario for you guys. Um, we're going to start off with uh, some pretty easy parts here, and then we'll mosey on to a little bit harder parts, and then we'll get into some four and five axis and a uh, little bit of mill turn for you guys on how to do coordinate systems. So um, just getting started here, uh, you'll see in my SolidWorks, I haven't started a new SolidCam project on this one yet. In SolidWorks, you guys can actually insert coordinate systems, um, full associativity with SolidCam. Um, and that's basically, if you just go to your SolidWorks under reference geometry, you can create a chord system. So you'll see I have one right here, chord system one, got a coordinate system number two, and those are gonna actually play into um, as we get going on here. So with that being said, let's get into 
a new million project here and we'll get a coordinate system thrown on there. All right, so like always, you know, you guys can pick your post processor, but um, tonight we're gonna be covering the coordinate system. So basically just hit define. Now you guys have a ton of different options. Um, and like I said, we're gonna kind of start off with something easy and then we're gonna get into more of the complex stuff. Um, the feature that I use the most, and um, you know, it's totally up to you guys, but you know, 99% of my coordinate systems are always select face. Um, so, you know, we have right here, you just have to pick on it and you can click on a face anywhere you want. And actually, let me rewind a little bit. Up at the very top, where it says Mac Chord Sys number one and position one. Now, if I, what I want to do for you guys is kind of press and permanently in your brain that any Mac position is going to be your G54, G55, G56, so on. So if you have a Mac 2, that's going to be your G55. If you have a Mac 3, uh, that's going to be your G56. Now, the only time you want to use your positions is when you're doing four-axis indexial work. Um, basically, it's going to be a Mac 1, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4. And when we do the positions, it's basically telling the post processor to turn on the, the four-axis, and so it outputs the four-axis rotations for you guys. So that's at the very top right here. Like I said, Mac is all about G54, G55, G56, and position is using for four axis only. So hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Um, and if not, please let me know. I can go into a little bit more detail with that. But So select face. Basic, the easiest thing to use is just click on any face possible. Now, if you guys don't have a flat face, you can click anywhere that has basically a flat face. Um, and what it does is you'll see it throws a 3D sketch all the way around this part. Now, I know some of this might be a review for you guys, and um, but you know, we can kind of cover from the start to finish for the, the newbies all the way up to the experts. So um, what it does is it creates that 3D sketch, and you'll see it actually creates midpoints through the entire sketch of that 3D sketch. So I have a bottom, mid, top, and then I have a you know mid left, mid center, mid bottom, and I also have a center center right here too. So these are great position points. You know, like if we wanted our coordinate system in the top right, well technically I can't really get to the top right, you know, without having those there. So you can just do that select face, and then over on the left hand side is where you can do the pick origin. So let's say I just want it in the upper left corner. So I can just come over here, click on the upper left corner. Um, you know, if I want to attach it to, you know, a certain point right there, it will actually attach it to that point also. So real nice, easy, simple to use. Um, now, when you guys hit your select face, you guys have a couple different options over here. Um, and this is going to be your default. And whatever you last left it at is what it's going to be defaulted for. So like right now, we have it set to top center of bottom, can't even talk, of model box. So it's basically just going to put it right in the center of this um, this space for us. Now, if I wanted to do you know top corner of bottle box, so I can do model box. Model box. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just exit out here and click our cord this again. So top corner of model box, I can click on that select face and it should put it in the corner. So you'll see right here down in the bottom left corner right here. Um, so that one, that, that one will get you in, you know, if you're more into the corners and like I said, you know, these, you know, if it puts it down in the lower left and you guys want in the, the upper right, definitely just come up and click the pick origin spot and just click and it will move it up there and it will attach itself to that 3D sketch. So you can do the same thing with the bottom corner. Um, if you guys like to do your cord sys off the bottom of your part, maybe you aren't able to probe the part and you just want to probe the bottom of the vise. Um, see that happen quite a bit. So that's where that feature comes in. And you know, even though that we picked on the top corner, um, you know, like I said before, I can click on the pick origin and I can still grab the bottom and click wherever I want it to go around there. So now my second favorite one is center of revolution face. So if you guys wanted to probe a spud um, or even on a turning part, or if you, you know, wanted 
you know, probe down in here using the web or probe on here using the boss. All you have to do is use the center revolution face and it will put it exactly in that center. Um, now, for you guys that, you know, maybe you guys started off with a just a round tube and you can do the select face and it will give you the midpoints, but it's actually more accurate to use the center of revolution face because what it does is it projects that, uh, basically it does a facet all the way around there and it finds the exact center versus just doing a square 3D sketch. So um, anything to do with round stuff, definitely use the center of revolution face for that. Um, now if you guys are on a, on a lathe, you click on that and it's on the wrong side, you can always click the change to opposite and it's gonna actually flip it around to the bottom side. Let me start fresh here. Get in the cordsus back again and we'll sever it center of revolution. And if I change to opposite, it will throw it actually on the bottom side of that circle. Um, so easy to use. Um, and like I said, the select face is about the easiest, the least amount of mouse clicks possible besides the uh, SolidWorks. Um, and like I said, top center, that's the one what we originally picked on there. So, you know, just click on that top face and it'll throw right in the center of that part. You know, and if your part shifted off one way or other, like let's say if this part was actually shifted more farther over to the right, it's still gonna put the coordinate system in the center of your total outside boundary, I guess you could say. And then uh, corner box on projected Z level, um, basically like a theoretical point. You know, if, so if you guys wanted to, you know, click a line here, click a line here, it will throw that point out for you. So now we'll, we'll show that in just a little bit later on um, and how that works on some of the, the more complex parts. So now this works great. Um, you guys can have this set up automatically when you start your new uh, CAM project. Um, it's basically going to be solely based off of how the model was designed. So if the engineer did some, you know, if he designed it off the front, you know, view or the front plane when he started his sketching instead of top, um, when that coordinate system comes in automatically, it's going to, you know, kind of base it off of where the original SOLIDWORKS part was created. So. Um, so now, over a little bit farther down is, you've seen me kind of use the pick origin. Um, you can use the pick X, Y origin, just a couple different options. You know, you can do X direction, you can do Y direction, a um, lot of different, you know, features. Honestly, guys, out of all the years I've been using SolidCam, I've never used any of these except for the pick origin, um, because with the pick origin, I can just click on my point and it's going to go there. Um, you know, pick my X, Y, got a little bit more work going into it. Let me get started off with a fresh cord this again here, and we'll, instead of doing center face, we'll do uh, center of corner bottle, model box. Hmm. All right, so we'll do a select face. Okay, so now, um, oh, it looks like I got a bottom, but that's fine. So now over here is where you guys are gonna also use these features a lot. So if we do the pick origin, and you know we order up here, but let's say we just had our part rotated around, like sitting like this in the vise. Um, you can flip around the Z to get that X and Y going the proper direction for you guys. Um, this is the one that you're gonna use the most also, the flip around Z. But, you know, like I said, if you're coming in on a, on a bad face um, or a face that has full curvature, let's actually demonstrate that. Go and record this again here. And let's say this whole top side is actually curved. Um, we'll just do top corner. And so I have really don't have a flat surface to pick on. I can actually click on the side right here and I'll throw my coordinate system, you know, the Z is going actually the wrong direction. But like I said, I can come up here, do my pick origin, and now I can flip around my X to get my Z going the right way. And now I can flip around the Z to get it going the proper way also. So a couple different flipping techniques right here, um, which are really useful. Now a little bit farther down is your deltas, basically your shift. If you want to, you know, let's say probe off your stock and you know your stock is exactly 100 thou, you can add that 100 thou in there and you'll see that we get the shift. Let's do a negative here. And you'll see we get that shift over in that, uh, the negative direction of X. So that kind of helps out for, you know, 
if you're going off a of stock, um, or if you just need to shift it over a little bit, um, works great. Now, when we're picking our coordinate system right here, you guys can definitely don't have to pick it off of the model. Um, you guys can put your coordinate system on a fixture plate. Like I said, using a dull pin, um, you guys can put it on a Kurt Vice. So whatever you guys want, um, you know, you guys can add that in there. And let me get through the the deltas and the, the rotations. I'll actually kind of give you guys an example of that. So that, hopefully that explains everything with the delta. You know, basically just how we, if you guys want to shift that coordinate system over. Um, same thing with rotations. If you guys want to add a rotation around what the y-axis, you know, we can put in you know 45 degrees, and you'll kind of tip everything up at 45 degrees. So if you have that you know that part that needs that flat right here. Um, and you, you know you want to grab that 45 degrees you can definitely put that in there also so I'll put that back at zero here so when it comes into adding the coordinate system with your fixture um, you know when you guys start a new project let's say you're you're exactly where I'm at I don't have my fixture in there yet and I want to put that put the coordinate system on that fixture just go ahead and put any coordinate system on there it doesn't even matter where it is Hit the green check mark out. I'll get out of here. And now, let's get some thinking here. Uh, now what we can do is we can come over to our assembly, insert. Let's see if I can get to my uh, vice real quick. Let's see. No, oh, I think I have it under here. Kevin, that's what I was going to say is that a lot of the time the theory is get the coordinate system on the part and then you can really move it around to wherever you want to, correct? Yep, absolutely, yep. Yeah. So now I get the full ability to use my vice. I mean, obviously you'd have it made it up, but now if I come into my coordinate system, do edit, click my edit coordinate system, now I can come on my select face, come over here, and I can, you know, if I want to do it off the, the top corner jaw right here, do my pick origin and get it off that that jaw right there, flip around the Z so our X is going the right direction, and then you're done. So everything's going to be related to, to that spot. So like I said, works great if you guys can't probe, you know, a part or, you know, if you have it bolted in the fixture. We know that distance over what it is. Um, so, because you made it up and everything, so everything should be shown, uh, or it shouldn't be, it will be shown correctly for you guys. So, like I said, the coordinate system does not have to be on the part. Um, if you guys want, you guys can bring your whole, uh, you know, uh, CNC table in, and you can, you know, if you had a, a hole in there, you want to probe off that, then you, that could be a reference point also. So, it doesn't have to be on the part. I just want to you know, emphasize that as much as possible. So we want to make this as easy as possible for you guys and, you know, use with what we, what you have. So, all right, let's get rid of, uh, we'll just keep it in here. So now, um, let's get back into our coordinate system here. And two, if you guys want um, your coordinate system, right now we have Mac 1 position 1, which is going to be your G54. But if you guys want, you guys can take this and make this your G55. And real easy to do is when you're starting your part, come into your, uh, let's see, where do we have it here? Oh. Um, where's my button here? There, oh, right here. Down at the very bottom, the I work offset method. With this I work offset method, you can set this value to be yes, and all you have to do is rename that coordinate system instead of being position one. All you do is you type in 55, 56. Don't put the G in there. Just just put the number. So 55, 56, 57, uh, whatever you guys want. And that's simply just coming down here, changing that value to a one. And that's basically just a turning on the switch to allow it to um, pull the the number in there instead of you know being defaulted to the G54. Um, hopefully I'm not confusing anybody. Am I confusing you, Steve? No, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> okay. All right. So 
let's uh, we'll edit that chord sys, and we'll sh I'll show you guys a different way of adding the coordinate system on there. So you guys have the option to do define. Um, simple, easy, kind of like before. Let me get rid of my all these origin points here. Let's see. View, okay. show hide, and origins. Okay. So now the define button. Basically, all it's asking you for is the origin point, x direction, and y direction. So I can come over here. I, if I want this to be my origin point, I can click on there. My x direction is going to be this way, and my y direction this way, and it will throw a coordinate system on there the same way. A um, little bit more clicking around with this because you have to, I guess, four mouse clicks versus two or three with the select phase. Um, but you know. Each chord sys has, you know, each part has its own, it's its own animal. So I know for you guys, uh, you know, you guys are getting some more complex parts than what I have up right here. So this is, we kind of give you as many options if you guys want. Um, so that's pretty simple right there. Um, like I said, just pick on the origin point and then you can also, you know, move it around to where you want. Um, you know, if you want it there, or, you know, if we need to flip around the Z, you can do as all as you're flipping there also. So let's get rid of our uh, vice in there. And we'll just delete. That would hide it. Okay. So now, get back in our chord says here, edit. Now, um, the select chord sys, this is the one that is inside SOLIDWORKS. So if I just click here, you'll see I have two options. I can click my chord sys 1 for my SOLIDWORKS, or I can click my chord sys 2. Um, and this is, can be added in by the engineer, or you guys can, as you're drawing the part, you can add this in there. Um, it's a little bit tougher on the SOLIDWORKS side, but if you're a SOLIDWORKS guru, it's, you know, no, the simplest thing ever. But um, you know, if you guys are kind of new to the system, it's much easier just to use the select face instead of using the SOLIDWORKS uh, chord sys. Um, but simple enough, you know, come in here and you just basically pick which SOLIDWORKS one you have there. And the nice thing is this is 100% full associative, so anything that changes will the, solid, the uh, coordinate system manager will also update with that. So, you know, if I hit the green check mark here, you'll see it throws our coordinate system on there and we're done. Um, let's add some more in here. So now, if you guys want to do like a, a part flip, so we want to go on to Mac 2, all you have to do is just click the Add button. There's no need to create two separate solid cam programs at all. Um, you guys can keep all this all within a program um, and just G-code out the sections that you guys need. So you'll see I have my Mac 1 uh, position 2 highlighted. I actually want to bring that over to Mac 2, so all I have to do is switch that over to 2. It will default my position to be back at 1 again. And now what we'll do is, um, you know, we'll do a normal to current view. So this is um, helpful if you guys want to zoom in on a certain area. So let's say I just want a coordinate system on this area, you know, right in front of me right here. Minimize this here. And let's say I just want a normal to my current view. I can click on that, click Capture and it will throw a coordinate system to that view. So it, it threw it in the corner here, it's kind of referencing, but you'll see that my my numbers are skewed to go along with this angle right here. And, you know, our angle is 135 degree angle, so it, it automatically accommodated for that. So if you can see here, let me hit the green check mark out, what I'll do is I'll turn off that one right there, and you'll see that my Z direction is going straight out with along with the surface. My X direction is going, you know, parallel along with the surface, and our Y is going the right direction. So um, just another nice feature that we have in there. Um, like I said, we want to add as many things in here as possible. Uh, if you guys see something that you guys want to uh, in there, definitely let us know. Um, in the in the support because uh, you know we want to make SolidCam a customer 
you know, basically you guys own the solid cam and we want to make this as easy as possible for you guys. So definitely throw those suggestions in there too. All right, so now what we'll do is you can do by three-point associativity. Now the three-point associativity is pretty much the same as the define. Um, so we'll add a new one here. We'll do by three-point. And it's, it kind of tells you what you, you're looking for over here. So origin point. So I can click on that. And we click on our X direction. Oops. Grab the. Hang on one second here. I got. Uh, delete this one out. Edit this one. Get too many piled on top of each other here. Okay. And my SolidWorks filter is not allowing me to click the line. Do select other. Oh, this SolidWorks 2016 is getting me. Hmm. Let's see, we'll go to tools. Yeah, sorry about this, guys. Let me just add my filter in here so I can grab that uh, sketch point or sketch line. Let's see, filters. All right, so let's try this again here. And now we'll go to our line filter. So now, like I said before, basically the same thing as um, your define, but you'll have full associativity of this, and that anything that changes with the model will the solid or the uh, coordinate system will automatically update with that. So, um, pretty simple, easy. Do we have any questions at all with our coordinate system that we've kind of gone over with this part alone? Um, let's see, SolidWorks part only wouldn't do this, correct? Uh, Kevin, I'm not sure what you mean, SolidWorks part only. You mean um, with the assembly, we'll bring in a fixture in and that stuff? I think Kevin is asking um, if you guys just have, instead of having uh, SolidWorks professional, you had, oh yeah. Okay, so what Kevin, only Kevin, yeah. I think, yeah. Yep. So what uh, Kevin is actually getting to there is um, you, there is different levels of SolidWorks packages. Um, now there is parts, parts and assemblies, uh, parts assemblies and drawings, um, the professional, they keep going up from there. Um, so if you guys are running just part only, unfortunately you will not be able to do a Quartzis off of a vice unless you know the exact dimension of that. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if we do, let's see, we'll just do an add to, and let's say our part's sitting right there and our vice is, you know, four inches off. You can do the delta shift over, um, but unfortunately, being since when you bring that Kurt vice, you automatically start a SolidWorks and assembly. assembly. Yep, yeah. we we aren't able to put a coordinate system on there just because we're not able to get that Kurt vice in there. So um, hopefully that answers your question there, Kevin. And if not, please let me know. But like I said, if it's just working yeah. part only, um, that should it, you'll only be able to bring your part only in there. So. And can I ask a simple question? How can I move the coordinate system from one position to another? Okay, easy enough. Um, you know, let's say you guys uh, want to just, you know, you, you decided that, you know, you guys are using this cord system right here and you want to move it. Um, just right click on it, do edit. Now my screen is going to show just a little bit different because I'm running 2016 here. Um, but basically you guys will get a box um, right here and it's going to have, it's basically all these numbers in this box, and then there's going to be an Edit Chord Sys button. All you have to do is click Edit Chord Sys, and now you can move it to wherever you want. Um, you know, if we wanted to do the Select Chord Sys and 
Maybe we wanted to grab that one instead. Just hit the green check mark and hit the green check mark out and you're all set. So hopefully that answers your question um, with that one on how to move it. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to build it into um, for you guys that when you guys do a edit chord sys that let's say you guys want to keep that same spot but you just wanted to bump it over you know a few more inches. Well right now basically you basically have to kind of start over from scratch picking that chord sys and then move it over. Um, what we're working on right now is getting that so you can actually just do a shift over for you guys so you always don't have to basically pick a whole new chord system and plant that in there for you. So all right, so in here is all the levels of what's going on. And I've kind of gone through these levels in other classes. Um, tool start level is kind of where that tool is going to wrap it down to. Um, if I can pull up see, yeah, the manual here, and I can give you guys a better um, let's see if we go to training stuff. And let me pull up that spot where it kind of defines the levels because the levels kind of get a little bit confusing um, so let's go to it's right here here is your levels so tool start level basically gonna wrap it right down as fast as possible down to that tool start level gonna do kind of a pause and then it's gonna go right to the clearance level. Now the tool start level also is based off of your fourth axis. So when you go to do a fourth axis rotation, it's gonna come up to that tool start level also. Come down to the clearance level, down with the rapid. As soon as we hit that clearance level, we're gonna switch it over from G00 to G01 uh, feed move, and we're gonna come up to the upper level and then feed into the part. So um, hopefully that kind of clears up things a little bit there. Now, tool start level, these, a lot of times you guys, you guys don't have to even touch any of these numbers. Um, it's basically kind of pulling it from the chord sys, but if you guys want to add some, you know, stuff in there, maybe your upper level is, you know, you want your upper level to be the top of the Kurt Vice or a toe clamp or something like that you want to clear. So you can just click on that button and you can click, you know, where you want that upper level to be and it will automatically change everything for you. So we have basically our prismatic parts, uh, two and a half D parts right here. Now if you get into the fourth axis stuff, here's where your, your radial movements are. Um, and this is more for the mill turn stuff right here on the, the sub turret uh, of the spindle. So, and if you guys want to do different outputs, like right now we're just doing X, Y outputs, but if you guys need to modify it, you know, you want to keep your coordinate systems the same there, but instead of, you know, spitting now X, Y, um, you guys can do, you know, Y, Z, or Z, X. Um, to be honest, I really haven't used this much out in the industry when I was programming, um, but I have seen a couple of customers come across where they wanted that, so that option is down there. And like I said, with the uh, 2015, you guys will see that in the box in the very bottom, too. Um, and I know this looks a little bit different. It's, it is 2016. Um, anybody that's interested in 2016, definitely just shoot me an email or shoot your account manager an email. Uh, we're just kind of doing a nice slow rollout right now um, of the 2016. So we're just going to slowly dish it out to you guys. All right. So any, do we have any questions on the simple part? Let's see. Rob. Is it possible for the non-assembly user to create another feature and simply not merge it uses for a vice? Um, I'm not going to about that one too, Kevin. Yeah, I think it's more you're just going to have to uh, kind of use that delta. To yeah, move that's, it. yeah, that's what I'm kind of gathering too. Um, Rob, if it's not, let me know. But... Um, you know, if we need to shift that off, let me just open up uh, our cords this here. Do our, just a regular select face. Um, you know, if we have our part sitting like that and, you know, we'll go top left corner and we can shift that over. You know, maybe it's five inches over, 55. Um, they'll actually put that coordinate system there. So I think that's what you're looking for, Rob, but please 
uh, let me know if it's not. Um, I want to answer that question as best I can. I think what Rob's talking about, if he's um, you know not using an assembly, just using part only, and if he wants to adapt for that vice, you just have to make sure that it's measured out perfect. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if it's just a little bit off on your your delta here, you're going to see your part kind of shifted over left or right if it's not exact. So. Um, I think that's what he's getting there. Now, one thing I wanted to add to uh, before we get out of this part is um, when you guys create a coordinate system, you'll see it. We're off in La La Land right here. Um, I cannot come up here and do evaluate and do a measure off of that because there's no point there. So what we've done, and I kind of went over this a little bit in the settings, is do you guys go over to your just the SolidWorks side of things and just do a show under your uh, your sketch in your chord sys. Let's see. Yeah, get out of here. Unsuppress, sorry. You'll see it. What it actually does, it draws a 3D sketch in there for you guys. Um, and like I said, we suppress this off the start because you know we don't want it getting in the way. But um, if you guys need to make a measurement just to do a sanity check, you just come over here, unsuppress it, and then now you can grab your measure and you can get, you know, whatever measurement you're trying to, you know, achieve there. You know, get your your lines all, make sure they're going all, they're parallel with, you know, this line over here and whatnot. Just kind of do a sanity check. So that option is there. Um, and it's going to draw all 3D sketches for you guys. Um, but like I said, those are all going to be suppressed right away. Um, so if you guys need to get to it, just come over here and just do unsuppress and do a show, and it will populate everything for you. So you'll see now that we have, you know, basically our, our y direction and our x direction with uh, the points to go along with those. So all right, let's see. I'm guessing James. Do you want to mention that you can also move your cord in the system after the part is programmed? Yes, great point. Totally forgot about that, James. Um, let's say you guys have 50 different operations here going on and you ran the part of the machine and the cord sys is in the wrong spot. That is no issue at all. You guys can go and change your coordinate system, your stock, your target, anytime you guys want. So if this, um, you know, let's just throw some toolpath on here real quick. I know we're on a really boring part, but uh, we'll just uh, whip some up here. Oh, hang on, I got delete. And I'll delete that chain. And delete. Oop, for some reason my uh, constant Z propagation was on. Okay. The green check mark. It's got some simple geometry. I'll just add a end mill in there. Tell it how deep we want to go. And we'll just extend that geometry out a little bit. All right. Save and calculate. And I have a feed that's too fast. <laughs> Oops, here we go. Okay. So now we got our toolpath on there. Um, you guys can see that it's updated right there. Now, I mean, I can simulate this for you know 25 different operations here. Now, um, let's say you ran the part, coordinate system's in the wrong spot. We didn't want it in that spot. Come in here, just do an edit. Click on your edit chord sys. You know, if we wanted it in the uh, you know top right, maybe right here. Hit the green check mark out. And now you'll see a little 
uh, little star by there. Basically what that means is it needs to be updated. So if I come in here um, and just do a right click and do calculate, it's automatically going to adjust for that new chord sys. The G code will um, populate correctly. And you guys can, you know, just right click on operations. You can do calculate all if you have, you know, 50 operations right here. Um, this can be set up automatically in your settings. Um, kind of went through that in the settings class, so it automatically synchronizes and calculates everything for you. Um, so a real nice feature, automatic, but like I said, I just have everything kind of set to manual for these classes so I can kind of show you what's going on behind the scenes for you guys. Um, but let's get into a little bit more complex of a part here. Let me just close out of this part here. And these, let's see, I threw it on my desktop. It's actually one of our customer's parts that I asked him if I could use here. So this part, um, it's kind of got some weird stuff going on. We really don't have, you know, any flat areas. Let me just go to my view. Let's get rid of all of my planes here. Um, basically, a pretty simple, easy part. But um, when we do a solid cam new milling here, hit the green check mark. If I do a define and just hit select face, it should just throw it right on the space. But if you've seen how those origins or those planes were all funky, you know, orientated, watch this. So I clicked on that face, but it's kind of throwing it off into, you know, a spot that I really can't get to. Um, you know, I basically I want it, you know, over here somewhere. Um, and sometimes they'll even throw it even farther off. So maybe the Z is actually cocked at a 45 which is fine. Um, you know, a couple different ways to accommodate for that is, you know, do your define. Um, let's say, you know, for this particular part, you know, here's our origin point, um, and we wanted our, our X direction, and we really can't get a Y direction here. Well, I guess we can click on that one and get a Y direction. That will throw everything kind of where it's supposed to, and then we can just accommodate for the radius. But let's get a little bit more complex here. Um, actually, let me just throw a chord sys on there. And I really don't care where it is. Hit the green check mark out. And now this is where SolidWorks comes to your your benefit here is let's say, you know, I wanted it, you know, over here. So I can just click and do a sketch and I can create a sketch point you know, wherever I want on this, and I can use that as my chord sys. So maybe I want it, you know, center, um, you know, maybe I want it just at that exact point right there. You guys can just do a sketch point, and, um, you know, if you want to, you know, align it with a certain direction, we can also add our, you know, our lines in there too. You know, let's say we want kind of just a goofy angle. Definitely use Oops, if I can draw my line straight. Attach it here. Definitely use SolidWorks to your advantage. Um, so we got that. Open up our chord sys. Edit right here. And what I'm going to do is do a define. And obviously I didn't draw my line uh, right at 90 degrees there, but you'll see that I am able to pull my SolidWorks sketch point um, or just two lines in there as a, you know, as a, a base for your, um, for your model. So if it's not showing up correctly or, you know, if you just kind of want a, that theoretical point out there, definitely use SolidWorks to your advantage. Um, you know, maybe if we wanted to pick origin and we wanted it right there, definitely just click on that origin and you know use SolidWorks to your advantage so um, and like I said anything changes right here that chord this is going to update with it because it's linked to the SolidWorks model so um, do we have any questions on kind of the, the the goofy part right here before we get into the four axis we're all good it doesn't look like it no yeah. um, Hopefully we're not putting them all to sleep. 
<laughs> I hope so too. All right, let's close out of this one. Let's get into a little bit more interesting parts here. And let's see. All right, so let's get into the four axis stuff. Um, like I mentioned before, basically the, the four axes, you know, when you're using a fourth axis, you want to use the positions. Now, as you guys are adding positions in there, if it's not allowing you to, because um, we get a lot of calls this way, that, you know, maybe it's not allowing you to put the X in the right direction, it's basically because your fourth axis isn't rotating the, cor the correct way. Um, so definitely make sure, you know, you're, you have your coordinate system set up correctly so it's going to rotate, you know, around the X or, you know, if you guys have your fourth axis, you know, around the Y. Um, but this, with this part, I set it up around the X. Um, and if I open up our coordinate system, you'll see all my different positions in there. Um, so I have a position for each side that I want to rotate to. So um, let me uncheck all these except for our master. So our MAC1 position 1 is going to start off on our basically our B0. Now, if I wanted to, you know, go through and machine all this stuff out, then I want to rotate over to the next side, I can just basically rotate this. Say I want to create a MAC1 position 2, and we'll create one on that face right there. And same thing with three, you know, it's just rotating around. And this is basically telling the post processor to basically output the, you know, the radial movement that you, your fourth axis is looking for. So, you know, 90% of the time for you guys, it's going to be a BX rotation, but some machines going to be A, some are just going to be different numbers, letters, um, and that's all described in the post for you guys. But as we add these along, um, you can add as many positions as you want, and it's basically going to pop. It kind of depends on your post, um, but let's just post out some code here, and you'll see our rotations that are going on here. So with this one, um, oh, we actually might not even be posting our rotations because I don't have the two together. Yep, let me uh, get those two together here. So we'll be going from Mac 1, position 1, to basically the from the top side to the bottom side. Let me get rid of this one here. G code. All right, so you'll see we have our A rotation right there of A rot uh, 180. Now, if you guys were to create this in Mac 1, Mac 2, Mac 3, that A value wouldn't even show up. So and it's basically just we're keeping the same, you know, the G54, same work coordinate system, um, as before, but we're just telling the fourth axis to rotate around for that other one. And you can add as many positions as you guys want. I think the Haas holds up to, is it 99 different positions, I think it is, if I remember right. Um, and there, you know, other machines definitely vary in size-wise too. So um, fourth axis is really easy to use. Um, basically, you just throw a position on the side you want to use, and it rotates to that point. Um, so if we wanted to do, you know, add another one, we can just come in here, click Add. It's automatically going to default to Mac 1, position 5. And, you know, I can just add it to, um, you know, maybe if we want to do normal to current view here. We'll add that position 5 in there for me and add that little goofy angle of whatever I had the screen position to there. So. Um, and just keep adding them right through the list. Now, if you guys want to see or show different ones, um, you can definitely check box these uh, in there. Um, let me edit this one real quick. I'm going to cover one other thing here. Let's say you guys want to do a, um, you know, you want to kind of keep everything associative just to that Mac one, and you just kind of want to do rotations around. When we get into the Mac or the positions, we add another spot down here to cord sys one. So basically, you know, we'll click on this face, but it's going to stay relative to that original cord sys with the Z just going the right direction this time. Um, I know it sounds a little bit complex, but you know, for most of the parts that I see from you guys is, and which is the proper way of doing it is 
you know, is throw your XYZ right in the center of your rotary table. Um, we always know where that position is, and we can always go out from there. Um, so, you know, if you guys wanted to come to this side, you can just click on this select face right here, and it's going to actually, you know, have the Z going the right direction, but it's still going to have the XY, you know, in the center of your, of your XYZ in the center of your rotary table. So um, just getting that Z pointed up the right direction for you guys. Am I missing anything, guys? Anything that you guys need to see? You? Um, I can. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull up another one here. Let's see. I'm going to our um, some parts here. Nope, that's not the one I wanted. I have a fourth axis one I built and uh, for doing a more of like a uh, tube stone style. Let's see, I go to recents. Maybe throw it out there too to the, the group, Kevin, if anybody wants to see maybe a turn part, just a coordinate system. Would you have something like that, Kev? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Uh, yeah. so we'll actually get to next here. So um, this one is, you know, for kind of doing, you know, if your tube stone is, you know, sitting up, um, you know, as I show some tool paths for you guys, got the cord cyst right in the center. Um, let me turn off that path and show you guys where all the different cord cysts are. So I have a bunch of different coordinate systems all the way around this part. Um, you know, at our angles to do our angle faces and stuff like that. Um, this is actually a great part for doing the transform, which will be, I think we're covering transformations next week. I can't remember. But um, so with this part, we really have to worry about just putting coordinates on the one side and actually doing a transform all the way around. But just another way of showing you guys, um, you know, how to set up those coordinates. This is actually done on a five ax machine here with a trunnion um, and this, the the four axis is actually built into the trunnion on the Haas machine, so um, can rotate around, and it's basically just wherever that that cord cyst is, that trunnion is going to rotate automatically for you guys. So you guys don't have to put those numbers in there, anything like that. Um, it's all done automatically for you guys in the post processor for you guys. So um, real easy, and let me get out of here. Let's get into a turning part here. I didn't think you could talk about coordinate systems this long, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I was thinking this is going to be a short class, but <laughs> as I look at the time, I'm rambling on too much here. <laughs> See, uh, all right. And let's pull up a... So basically kind of the same thing as what you guys, you know, were working on before. Um, usually with turning, you're, the only coordinate system you're going to use is the center of rev revolution face. Um, you know, just because that's how your lasers are set up, or most of them are set up. So, you know, you guys want, just click on any diameter, any face, anything but the, the circular edge. Um, even up here, you know, if I come up here, let's just add... You would say Mac three, and we'll just do center of revolution face. If I click on this face, it will throw that coordinate system in the center for you too. So anything but a flat surface or the edge. Um, if you click on the edge, it will give you the illegal plane direction. So, um, which is uh, you know because they were selecting off the edge. Now for the turning guys, um, basically all you guys are really going to have mostly is just two maybe just one, um, you know, if you have a part that you need to take out of the jaws, flip it and stick it back in, um, you know, just get your Z's going the right way. You know, if you guys are running in the sub spindle, um, you know, make sure your Z's just heading out the, ro the right way. And you'll see it when you guys do the turning side of things. But, um, you know, real easy. Um, you know, this one we actually have a couple other uh, positions in there to do some of the live tooling. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, 
turning is pretty easy. Same thing with mill turn. Um, you know, if you guys need a mill on this face, all you guys have to do is just, you know, click select face on here and it will throw that quartz on here. Let me open it up here and I'll get rid of all this and I can show you all the different um, positions. Can I get peeked around here? So, you know, for milling that face, one of these guys, oops. So you can kind of see all the different rotations that's going on there for the, the mill turn side of things. So we have one going for the slot right here, uh, one for the flat face here, one for drilling the holes. And this is just live tooling that you guys have to add these additional ones on there. Uh, if you guys don't have live tooling, like I said, you just have to worry about the two or just even the one if you're just doing just a straight turn uh, part there. So do we have any questions at all of what we're kind of covered? Um, Anything you guys want to see with the coordinate systems, how to move, modify, change. Um, the only thing I can't do with the coordinate system is change colors. <laughs> but um, Good point. Z is always blue, red is always X, and Y is always green. Now, even though I have my coordinate system right here, don't base anything off of over here. This is the SolidWorks coordinate system based off the original. So, um, you know, like I said, You'll see it down here, and as I'm rotating stuff around, it, it's not going to line up, and that's just how the SolidWorks model was actually built. So, um, But that kind of wraps everything up. Um, you know, Like I said before, um, for you guys that are new, the Telefriend program, you know, just give us a name and a phone number, send it off to myself or the account manager, um, and we'll get them in the demo, and you guys get a – hundred dollar gift card and also right here it says fifty dollar gift card um, just tell them that you were watching the kevcam class and we'll double that for you guys um, so definitely take advantage of that uh, Steve you got anything to add on that nope uh, just a nice uh, little program to help uh, get the word out about us gentlemen for sure absolutely so. um, and like I said with this night class guys I want you guys to you know Obviously, you guys are staying up late at night, or some of you guys, it's late at night, some is a little early, but, you know, I want to make this class as beneficial for you guys as possible. So, you know, I know James, you sent me a couple ideas. Um, Joe, I think you sent me a couple ideas. A couple of you guys have sent me great ideas. Love them. They're actually going to be added in there. Um, the website will actually be updating within the next weeks for those um, that are you know looking for those classes. So we're gonna get into we're gonna kind of start off with some easy 2D stuff. Get into some really complex 2D stuff. You know more of the HSS HSM uh, features for you guys. And like I said, if you guys have something you guys want to see, definitely just shoot me an email and yeah. we'll add in there. I have no problem switching around um, you know the classes for like I said. I want this to benefit you guys as much as possible. Um, it's free training for you guys, so you guys will. Might as well let me know what you guys want to see <laughs> instead of me just absolutely blambling on. Keeps it, keeps it fresh for us too, Kevin, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> Gives yeah, me a welcome challenge. Yep, yeah, welcome the idea. So please keep them coming, guys, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, like I said, uh, definitely check out the YouTube channel. Um, I will get this uh, video edited for you guys. Um, and get it up to YouTube as soon as possible. So it'll probably be on YouTube about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so you can definitely look forward to that video there, and it will be updated there. And like I said, for all future videos, are all out in here for you guys also. So, um, But like I said, I just want to thank you for your time at night. I know you guys could be, it's in the middle of summer, you guys could be doing something so much better than, Listen to me, Ram. Me and Steve ramble on at night, but um, just want to thank you for your time. And uh, you know, like I said, if you guys have any ideas, let us know. Steve, got anything else? Nope, I think that's it. Except to thank everybody for the time, and uh, everybody have a good evening. Absolutely, we appreciate uh, your business. Yep. Absolutely. Thanks again, guys. Have a great night. Bye bye. Yep. Bye.